last time I had you, you gave me a bit of a scoop, I think, inadvertently. Oh, did I? Yeah, you mentioned something about the Harley Quinn film. Oh, did I? And I think your publicist was in the background, like... Shaking no. her head violently. <laughs> Welcome back, Margaret Thanks. Robbie, to Cheers. Tipsy Talk. You were my first returning guest. Mm-hmm. Congratulations on the huge honour of... <laughs> being, I'll, I will happily guest. be your guest every time, any time. Thank you so much. If there's a mimosa involved, I'm there. Congratulations on the film. Thanks. Congratulations on the nomination. I mean, it's just gone from strength to strength, hasn't it? Since Toronto, it's like yeah. blown up. Yeah, we, we didn't know what to expect in Toronto. And then the feedback started coming back great. And, and for, for both like critics and the general public, you know, for the most part, it was really good. And and then it kind of escalated from there. We can't quite believe the position we're in now. In particular, I would love to talk about that scene in the mirror. Oh, yeah. It really got me. Good. Staring in the mirror and that smile. And there's so much to it. I want to talk about the performance behind that and how you get to a point where you can do so much with just that look. It's funny because that wasn't in the script and it wasn't planned. It was just something on the day that our DP, you know, we're doing a shot of her before going out and obviously uh, we'd done the stuff in the hallway with the broken lace and and putting myself in the mindset of being at the Olympics and the pressure of the world looking down and Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. And then our DP just said, oh, can she just do one to camera? And I was like, okay, what should I do? He said, I don't know, maybe put on your makeup or whatever. And uh, I was trying to do like the clown face, you know, the the, like just trying to put the mask on and it it just kept cracking and trying to put it on, it just kept cracking and it just like, there was a lot, you know, we'd been filming for a while by that point. I, I, all those emotions were kind of bubbling under the surface Mm -hmm. and I finally had a a release for it. I didn't expect to release it in that scene in that way, but it, just one of those things that kind of happens in the moment and and ends up making it in the film. Sort of a lightning in the bottle yeah. moment. Yeah, that I had no for. idea that wasn't scripted. That's really, yeah. really interesting. That just came out like magic, I suppose, when yeah. you're kind of left to find the character yourself. And she is such an interesting character and you're playing someone real. Mm-hmm. So that's obviously a different, there's a different approach going into that kind of performance, I would imagine. Yes and no. I mean, there's I'm obviously very conscious of the fact that it's a real life person who's still alive and who's going to see the film also a real life person that everyone already not everyone but most people Mm -hmm. already know and have already passed judgment on so there was an extra level of intimidation there and (laughs) responsibility and obligation but really I just tried to put that out of my head and approach the character like I would approach any fictional character and and I tried to keep real life Tonya and the character Tonya very separate in my mind so that I Mm -hmm. could let the character exist in its world and not hold back not try and um, I think that one of the main things we focus on is how people try and control their... It's a very human thing to try and control your narrative. That's why we have so many yeah. unreliable narrators telling the same story in totally different ways. It's because everyone's trying to control their narrative and, you know, try and justify the way they behave at the time. So for my character to not be controlling the narrative that we're commenting on, I, I needed to be... I needed to separate it and let the character show the ugly sides and the tragic sides as well as the funny and amazing and emotional sides. The dialogue, the soundtrack, there's so much about it that's like, you know, you're laughing out loud and and it's a riot and it's fast paced, but also it's dealing with child abuse and domestic Mm. violence and there's some really heavy themes. So Mm -hmm. how is it to like balance those aspects? It was tricky to balance them both and and really it came down to trusting our director and finding Mm -hmm. the right director in the first place. Craig was the perfect person to do this. He was the only person I really felt that could accomplish this specific tone that I'd seen him do uh, in a way in Lars and the Real Girl, a film he did years ago with Ryan Gosling. And um, he thrives in that space, I think, approaching characters that other people might make fun of, but he never does. And he always searches for the truth in the scenario. So uh, it wasn't so much for me to decide how much to give. It was about giving him all the options mm-hmm. and letting him tell me when to dial it up, dial it back. He never made us play for the punchline. He's always like, no, I don't care if it's written funny right now. What, what would you actually do? How are you actually feeling? Show me that. Um, and I really appreciated that approach. It, it helped us navigate the tone. Film aside, mm-hmm. so much has happened since I last saw you. I know. You're married. Yes. You've got a production company with yes. your husband and friends now. Yes. Obviously with the Me Too movement and with so much of that going on in Hollywood at the moment, to see a woman producing her own film and starting her own production company and sort of operating stuff from behind the scenes as well mm-hmm. as being on camera is really, really lovely for the rest of us. So oh, good. I'm glad. Was that part of the decision at all or was it just something you wanted to It was. To do? I mean, the point of the company was to promote women in film, whether that be the through female protagonists or female-led content or through female storytellers. Um, I think if we want to see change in this industry, we have to have more women in positions of power and 
that's when things will really change and you'll get a more authentic version of a female story sometimes. Yeah. Not always though. Craig told the story and of he course, directed yeah, women course. brilliantly. And I've worked with quite a few directors, male directors, who tell female stories wonderfully because they don't see it as a male or female story. They of see course. them as people. Um, but no, it was definitely the, the driving force behind our company to promote women in film and to also a chance for me to kind of uh, control my fate a little more and take matters into your own hands kind a little bit. Of. Going out on a wing there, doing it with a husband. How's yeah. That been? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's really great. That's yeah. So lovely. No, it's I know it's amazing. It's it's we're all we're all friends at the company. We're all best friends and we've been friends for years and we all work really well together and nothing feels like work when you're doing it with your friends. Oh, that's so lovely. Yeah. And so true. Yeah, I get to work with my friends quite a lot. And it is a lovely thing when you're on set for the day. It never quite feels as exhausting. No. Last time I had you, you gave me a bit of a scoop, I think, inadvertently. Oh, did I? Yeah, you mentioned something about the Harley Quinn film. Oh, did I? And I think your publicist was in the background, like... Shaking no. her head violently. <laughs> it yeah, ended it's up really hard to navigate day. the comic book world. You can't... Everything's so under wraps oh, all the time. God, I know. Trust so me. So much speculation floating about constantly. Quite a lot. Mm. Has there been any developments on that yet? You're like, but give me my scoop. Um, now. I, I mean, I feel like it's not a scoop anymore because I, I've seen stuff about this now, but I could be wrong. I've been developing a Harley uh, spin-off of sorts with, uh, you know, f uh, quite a few female characters involved because my point was, in real life, I am constantly with other females my age and on screen I never am. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So um, if that's the next thing that goes ahead, I'm not sure. I think they're developing a lot of things because everyone wants to see Harley back on screen, myself included. I, I can't wait to play her again. I mean, she she was my favorite thing about that film. And I said this to you last time as well. Yeah. I'd love to see her again. Yeah. It's exciting that you'll have a few other female characters in there. Well, hopefully. I mean, there's still, yeah. a, still a, and is, a bit of a ways to go. Is that entirely separate then from sort of everything else that's going on? in the DC universe, is it like a whole other? Uh, yes and no. I mean, okay. it's everything in the DC universe is still DC universe, DC characters and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, something different. I will leave it there, not Cryptic. try and <laughs> scoop any more scoops out of you <laughs> this time around. But congratulations on everything genuinely with the nomination and with the marriage and with the production company. It seems like you've got so Thank much you. going on and going for you at the moment. I'm really, really happy for you. And um, best of luck with it. Thank you. Thank you, Cheers. Myra Robbie. That has been Tipsy Talk. <laughs>